Hey folks, Joseph Sabora here, doing a movie review this week. It's a fun, exciting bike chasing adventure that came out on August 24th, 2012, simply called Premium Rush. It's a story about a young bike messenger from New York City who decided to deliver a message that's being chased down by a corrupt cop. And despite of a good cast right here, as we got right there, Joseph Gore Levitz, Michael Shannon, as well as Dana Merez, and the rest of the other actors, this movie didn't do very well at the box office. In fact, it was a complete bomb. Only made $31.1 million out of its $35 million budget and it had good reviews from critics including the late great Roger Ebert who gave it a positive review calling it an expert spellbinding adventure that's that's a quote on the bottom and this is a blu-ray and DVD combo pack that I picked up just recently at Big Lots for only three dollars definitely worth it but it doesn't get talked about much and I think it's a shame because I remember seeing the trailer for this movie when I went to go see the film Drive at the Arclight Hollywood which is uh, next to the Cinerama Dome yeah I actually had a good time watching the movie Drive with uh, Ryan Goslin, yeah, Carrie Mulligan along with all the other actors like Albert Brooks Ron Perlman. I remember seeing the trailer for this and I was actually pretty excited because I thought it looks really good. I mean well done. It definitely shows so many uh, chase scenes going around New York where you see a lot of traffic going around and you basically see them getting bumper to bumper with taxi cabs and a lot of cars around and you know whenever they're in danger they you know they always bring in their the, the chain that they have, which they usually chain them to um, a pole, so that way you know they'd be able to have their bikes safely, so they don't get stolen. Sometimes they just use it to, to actually knock down someone when, whenever they get run over by a car or truck or any other, and they sure get hurt too when they did all these stunts. And and yeah, there, there's a lot of runnable stunts in this movie that they went for, so I'm going to get to it. Another reason why this movie didn't do very well too, and on the fact that this movie was originally going to be released in January, but once up in, in a measly August release, because also this was in the turn for Joseph Gordon Levitt's career because he's already a big star and he just did The Dark Knight Rises before this, and, and he was already in the middle of another film called Looper. That was his upcoming film, which that too was underrated doesn't get talked about much and that it was this this movie had a lawsuit apparently uh, there was a, an original offer by the name of Joe Quirk and he wrote a book that has a, a very similar plot to this movie it was called The Ultimate Rush so apparently he did this book in 1998 without permission from the studio so the studio couldn't, uh, apparently just did the movie of their own with writer and director David Cap, and yeah, not Cope. Yeah, I, I always get some difficulty with names. Um, so they actually settled in for that, that lawsuit that happened. So, it, so during a breach of contract, um, he didn't win the case, sadly, but... They had to settle in for court, so that's why this movie was post forward to another release date. And by the time they settled this, um, it got released and just bombed. So, such a shame because I really love this idea for a movie. I mean, a bike messenger getting chased down by a corrupt cop, he gets involved in, in some secret message that's happening, you know, in order for him to to be safe. I mean, he's being chased down by cops around. It's, it's just amazing. Yeah, yeah. And 
Yeah, that's exactly what the <laughs> the combo pack looks like. Yeah, basically you see a DVD that's all clear with just the title. The other one just you just have the um, the cover art, which is actually from the movie poster, which actually said "Run like hell." I love that marketing they went for. <laughs> Yes, he has to run like hell. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. I'm tr I'm gonna try to get to the review and maybe I might spoil a little bit just to get to what the story is about. So anyway, here's the review. It stars Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Michael Shannon, who's been in a lot of films as we know for date, because I know he went on to do films like uh, The Runaways with. Um, Christian Stewart and and Dakota Fanning both playing the Joan Jett and and Sherry Curry, you know, in, in the old girl band that was biography on them. But he also went on to do other films like uh, Man of Steel and and has a big role in Batman vs Superman, which we know how his character turned out, and all these other films that he's been in. Of course, even the the underrated uh, Midnight Special. Which I really did enjoy. Yeah, he's a very good actor. Um, Dania Ramirez, Wille Parks, Asif Mandif, Jamie Chung, Ashley Austin Morris, Christopher Place, Henry O, oh, Boyce Wong, and Brian Copperman. It's written by David Cap, along with John Capps, and it's directed by David Cap. The movie begins when we meet a young bike messenger in New York City named Y. Lee, that's played by Joseph Gordon Levitt, who started out as a law graduate from Columbia Law, but wants to becoming a bike messenger just to deliver some packages throughout the entire streets of New York, which they basically spend time. You know, riding on the bike as fast as they can, without brakes. So they basically just run as fast as they can, try to avoid traffic all the way around, including taxi cabs, cars, pedestrians, even bikes, including all these uh, bike police out there. Well, anyway, um, he also has a girlfriend who's a bike messenger named Vanessa, who's played by... Dania Merez, along with his other fellow bike messenger named Manny, who's played by Wole Parks. So during that one day, his dispatcher named Raj, who's played by Asif Mandiv, actually, de actually decided for him to deliver a package that's being sent by Vanessa's roommate named Nima, who's played by Jamie Chung. Apparently, she's about to send $50,000 to that she actually had saved for two years for Mr. Young, who's played by Henry O, in order for her to actually be able to see her son that's in China. This becomes a, a whole monopoly that's happening around. Um, that is until we meet a corrupt cop who's also a gambler named Bobby Monday, who's played by Michael Shannon. So basically, he wanted um, Wiley to actually, ha he actually wanted Wiley to deliver the message to him, so that way he'd be able to get it, because he was involved in, in that situation that he has to go for. Plus, he owed, owed them uh, money to the gamblers that he had tried. Yeah, and, that, and that's what leads to what happens because, you know, he, he began, began involved in a gambling situation with the Chinese Mafia, which they he really did owe them something, but then he actually killed someone because of it. So that's what led to the bigger chase because, yes, he even called uh, Bobby Monday a douchebag. So while he decided to just continue to go on with his um, his uh, journey by going all the way back to um, deliver the message but that's what leads to that because he wants up chasing him around 
throughout New York, and then he suddenly hires uh, an NYPD uh, bike police officer, and he was actually played by, surprisingly, a, a stunt double. And this was his acting uh, debut right there. So he just chases him around throughout um, the entire city. So then he decided to file a report against the guy because he didn't realize it was a cop. So then he begins to go to a restroom, begin to find out what's inside the message in the envelope. And that's where he began to find a ticket stub, which leads to that. So that's where it just continues to go on and, and it just flashbacks, flash forwards to where the whole story begins. Yeah. Even leads to the accident that actually occurred and it just goes around really fast. <laughs> so apparently he has to deliver it by seven o'clock and all otherwise she won't be able to get to see her son arriving in uh, Chinatown. So that's basically what the story is about and I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a well done, well made, fast paced thriller that that just goes on for so long. I mean the movie is only 92 minutes but it just goes on really fast. It just shows all these flash forward scenes and flashbacks and all these other cuts. Uh, there's also a mix of CGI, mostly for the uh, all, all these uh, visualized scenes that uh, Wiley basically sees in in his eyes, where you basically see all the directions that that he had to make. Like for example, there's like an A, B, and C shot where there's one direction on the the right where he's going to accidentally run over a baby in the carriage. Another shot, uh, he was going to run over a pedestrian, and, and yeah, and the pedestrian was going to get run over by a truck. Yeah, you get to hear the, the William scream. I thought that was pretty clever. And then the other uh, shot, right in the middle, is where he finally gets to make it. So he'll be safe. And I love that. Um, it, it actually happened again, too, which apparently that's what led to that accident that happened. Oh, and, and speaking of which, um, if you saw a YouTube video online and you could definitely find it just type it up as they later uh, show that on Jimmy Kimbo and surprisingly he also made it into the movie too at the end where they basically just show a shot of Joseph Gordon Levitt uh, getting run over by a taxi cab and suddenly you see broken glass um, on both the, the front and the back and this is where he gets uh, a bloody arm it was the blood was rushing in, into his arm and he just tells him, don't try this at home. So It was being recorded by a random person who who uploaded this on YouTube and <laughs> it was on viral. So there you go. <laughs> I love that. I thought it was really clever. So it also proves that yes, uh, Justin Gore Levitt did actually did some of his stunts. Because he started um, spending time uh, doing all these stunts that he that he was riding on, that's what caused him to have those cuts and bruises. So this was real. This was not special effects that he got in there. But he does also have a lot of stunt bikers uh, that started to join in, especially um, a few of his stunt doubles that actually started to do all these amazing stunts uh, during those chasing scenes right there. Like For example, um, almost towards the end of the film, there was actually a chase scene uh, in inside the... Um, the pound lot, like in the parking lot, that's where you see all these bikes and, and all these cars being pounded inside. And, and it just, he's just doing all these loops uh, inside the, in one of these cars and then goes around and trying to be chased already after from, from the cops. Because he actually used that other bike as a decoy since his other bike was already been totaled completely. And after he got, he got uh, some broken ribs. Uh, during that accident, yeah. I also love the moment with Wiley being chased by a bike cop all the way around into a local store, um, all the way straight into the school bus, and it just keeps going on at times. And and then yes, 
there's even one scene where he actually stole uh, the bike and then at the end he just says that's it I'm done <laughs> oh that was just fun uh, also um, there was a one memorable scene where there was a chase between Wiley and Manny because Manny basically has the package um, that's inside the bag and he was about to go chase him all the way into Central Park and wow that that was a big chase right there it was like it just goes uh, as fast as it can um, a lot of great stunts that they used to, to create these shots um, it was just amazing um, and he, even the shots of of his girlfriend uh, Vanessa just um, going around but also she gets hurt too you know she gets knock around she fell and but then there's even a scene where she actually takes out the the chain that she has and just knocks down the a car mirror uh, that you from the the taxi cab and <laughs> yeah because she got run over by a taxi cab driver uh, that was really funny it, it it was definitely the adrenaline rush that this movie went for, and I love that. And it's a great cast. I mean, Michael Shannon did a great job too, uh, playing the the corrupt cop uh, going after Wiley, and yeah, you, know, you could pretty much tell that he was having fun. I mean, as opposed to Jessica or Levitt too, because he was really having fun. You know, despite of being injured, uh, along with some of the actors too. So, so you could tell that they were having fun doing this movie. There could be a lot of danger during, during on the set while they did this. Because they did shot this in 2010. So they had to spend that time to, to do so. Before this movie got its release uh, two years later. But it, it, it was all fun. and It's definitely a fast-paced thriller that just really works. And it's just a shame that this movie didn't get much attention it deserves. I really wish it did. Because I think it's one of the better films that came out. Um, out of all the bike racing movies that we've seen, I mean, I love Rad. I, I didn't mind Frashing. And maybe uh, the movie Quicksilver. Yeah, Quicksilver would probably get a good nod for this. Because it was very similar. Uh, I know there was BMX Bandits, which I didn't care for. Yeah, I think it's a... I mean, yeah, that film got got something already uh, but I do think it's a better film than than one might expect it so I'm, I'm glad to see that at least critics really did understand what this movie was going for so, but I just wish this movie got more attention it deserves I wish it was talked about more and I wish it had made more money at the box office so it would have earned its share I wish I'd seen it in theaters. I would have loved to see it, but I didn't get a chance by the time this movie flopped. Yeah, I mean, I probably felt the same way too, because that's what happened to uh, Dread. But other than that, though, uh, I had a good time and really loved it. It had wonderful cinematography done by Mitchell Amason. The music was done by David Sardi. I also. Um, I, I even love the, the beginning and the end of the film where they basically put the song Bob O'Reilly by The Who. Yeah. <laughs> so I thought it worked pretty well uh, for the beginning and ending of the film. And it has that guitar uh, driven the music that they put into it. Just It just goes by really fast. Yeah, There you go. Definitely a fast paced chase thriller that you'll never see ever again sadly. But who knows? If they'll ever have a similar film like this. So anyway, I give Premier Rush four stars. I'm Joseph Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.